So, uh, folks, would you give Bobby Ball a huge welcome as he comes to share with us? Thank you! Thank you! Got the music! Now, Lynn Yaman, what a wonderful welcome. That was absolutely fantastic. But usually, I do get a little bit more than that. <laughs> so I'm going to get off, come back up, and want you screaming and shouting. Ladies and gentlemen, Bobby Ball! <laughs> Got the music. That was fantastic. Now, that was good enough for me. Let's hear some applause for Jesus. Yeah. Come on, that's what we're here for. Come on. Absolutely brilliant. I'm going to tell you a bit about my, my life and the uh, stuff that's happened in it and so on and so on. Uh, Yvonne, can you just come down here a minute, love? Try to do it today because people are watching. This is my wife. She appears a lot in my story. Come on, love, say hello to people. <laughs> Go and get the book sold. We've been together 46 years. Anyway, let me get my glasses on. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. I was driving here tonight to Southport, and I've got one of these satellite uh, sat navs. You know what I mean? A sat well, because we're here, that means a satellite navigator. You won't have any of you. And um, as I got outside Southport, it said, keep going. <laughs> I found it funnier than that. Anyway, um, <laughs> but coming here, it's been, it's a, I love this, coming and talking about God. I'm still with Tommy, if you're all wondering. I still work with Tommy. We're doing a tour and we're doing the pantomimes and bits and bats. I can't leave him, ladies and gentlemen, otherwise he'd have to go in the old folks home. <laughs> And I can't allow that. And I love your dress, you're like an hanging basket. <laughs> anyway, <it's laughs> I'll tell you what, sir, you don't get many laughter lines, do you? No, not with this act. Anyway, um, coming here tonight, uh, I saw a fella at the side of the road, and he was sat there just crying. In, uh, I felt for him, and we just crying, and I said, you all right, mate? He said, not really. I said, what's wrong? He said, well, I've got a big house, he said. And I'm with him, I'm a millionaire. He said, I've got a beautiful house and everything. I said, why are you crying? He said, I'm lost. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> are you enjoying this? Can you tell your face? Okay. Um, don't laugh, don't you throw me by laughing. Don't you throw me by laughing. And get your hair cut. Anyway. <laughs> so I, lady and I men, come from a very beautiful, a beautiful little place in uh, Lancashire called Oldham. <laughs> you what, love? <laughs> uh, oh, now you start tackling me, do you? <laughs> Whereabouts in Oldham are you from? Uh, Springhead and Moorside. Springhead and Moorside. Do you know the down and putting slums up? No, I'm telling you, that's a rough place that is, all them blimey. I think Jesus missed that. <laughs> when I meet him, when I'm dead, I'm going to say, get to Oldham quickly. Anyway, I come from Oldham, ladies and gentlemen, and I come from a very, very poor family. No, it's poorer than that. All right. Hello, love, you're a bit late, aren't you? It's no good waving, you're a bit late. Oh, you've been to the toilet. <laughs> anyway, like I said, I come from a poor family. Who remembers Tim Bass? Yeah, we had a paper one. <laughs> and my mother used to shop for me school clothes at a place called the world famous Army and Navy stores. Right. <laughs> now, that's not so bad, but you try going to school dressed as a sniper. <laughs> it was like a tree walking. <laughs> anyway, they're doing all right. So anyway, what am I saying now? Oh yeah, tell me about my life, we're for all of them. It's swimming with a rack. Anyway, um... Sorry? 
It's one of them places, like, you know, when a... Like in the restaurant, old ones like this. It's like you go to France and you see them restaurants with all the tables outside and all that. In all of them, that's called an eviction. <laughs> Richard, you can laugh, mate. You don't get any better than this. <laughs> anyway, where am I? Anyway, um, I come from that area, ladies and gentlemen. I've been in show business all my life. From eight year old, I was in show business, and I was bringing more money in than my father at eight year old because I used to do the work in men's clubs. And my father was a very, very flat-capped... Um, he said to my mother, he wanted a boy. <laughs> Don't even go there. Don't even go there. He said, uh, he said to my mother, you'll keep having children till they have a lad. Smoking <laughs> his pipe. Want to be a footballer. Anyway, he had me and I started doing the club singing. And he said to my mother, I hope you've not bred one of them funny fellas. <laughs> and I was bringing more money in than him. Right, so I did that all my life, and then when I got to be 15, I left school, and uh, I'll tell you what, it was really difficult for me, because at school, everybody had school uniforms, we couldn't afford one. I had nothing, ladies and gentlemen. We used to have alphabet soup with one letter in it. <laughs> now that's not good, is it? Eh? Are you enjoying this, sir? Eh? Why have you got braces on? Oh, his pants fall down, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I was a premature baby, ladies and gentlemen. My dad weren't expecting me. And uh, <laughs> I'm tickling myself here. How am I doing, Yvonne? All right, is it up? Oh, get off. Okay, love, right. Um, you know, I was. And the sad thing about myself, ladies and gentlemen, I'm trying to tell you about my life before I get into it, but you're such a lovely crowd. And isn't this a fantastic church? And let me tell you, let me tell you, because you get, I go to a lot of places and you go to some churches and the people are holier than thou, never admit the sinners like this. God give us laughter. It's one of the biggest gifts we can have. God give us laughter. And it's fantastic. Listen, it's only through his kindness that we are forgiven. How joyful, I'll tell you something else. If you're a Christian and you don't like me, get used to me, because I'm with you forever. <laughs> and I'll find you. <laughs> it's fantastic. Anyway, where were I? Oh yeah, that's it. When I, I was not only poor, now I don't know why this is, I've turned into something quite beautiful, but when I was... <laughs> When I was a kid, ladies and gentlemen, I was a very ugly baby. I was that ugly, put me in incubator with tinted windows. It's bringing back memories here. And uh, when I, I shouldn't tell like this in a church, but I've got to be honest, I'm an honest man. But when I came out, the midwife slapped the wrong end. It was such a shock. I get on to about going, oh, I can't believe that. It's true that. I, I'm just reminding myself because they couldn't do anything with me, my mum and dad, because I was an ugly kid, right? And um, the circus came to, to the Oldham and they entered me in an ugly baby contest and they said, no professionals. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you're shaking your head for Denny. Anyway, there was um, a... Was my... Oh, that's it, yeah. So, I did all the clubs and all that as a, as a kid, a take your own. I packed it in when I got to be 15 because show business, I thought, was for sissies. And nobody did it. I can't believe it was a baby heckling me here. I've been heckled by everybody, but the baby's looking at me going, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> Beautiful. So anyway, this, um, well, just let me tell you this. So this truck driver went in a place and he sees a fella just uh, sat at his table. And he said, all right. And he picked his drink up and he drank it. And this bloke started crying, breaking his heart. 
truck driver said, what's up? He said, I'm only having a laugh with you. I'll buy you. He said, don't understand. He said, what did he say? I've lost my wife. He said, I've lost my house. I've lost my job. Nothing's going right for me. He said, I come in here and you go and drink my poison. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> you know, I've been telling jokes all, I've written them all down. It's amazing I didn't know I had these. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you remember him? The great Stanley Matthews. Yeah. Who remembers him? Come on. Well, I've got somebody here because he was well known First, Georgie Best stood and they were paying the respects and saying Sir Stanley was the greatest player of all time. Then Kevin Keegan stood up and said Sir Stanley was the greatest of all time. Then Bobby Charlton was amazing. He said he's amazing, best player. Finally, David Beckham stood up and said, I didn't know Sir Stanley personally, but I think his turkey drummers are brilliant. <laughs> Are we in church? Is it supposed to be a church thing? <laughs> because I'm really having a good time. I'll get up there anyway. So that was it. So I became a welder, right? And that's where I met Tommy. I was a welder. He was a fitter welder, right? Now, I've got to tell you something. This is true. I believe everybody can do whatever they want in life if they're prepared to go for it. And I mean that. And if you're a Christian, and I mean this too, if you're a Christian in here and you come to church and you praise the Lord, there's more to it than that. You should pray to God and say, right God, now I know you, what do you want to do for me? You'll be amazed what happens in your life. I never thought I would have been here speaking about the Lord, particularly in Southport. <laughs> That's a big draw for me, but I'm here. But it's true this, what I'm saying, it's true. So I became a welder. Tommy was a fitter welder. He used to run a lot. And he would always... <laughs> so you don't seem to be enjoying this. I'm not being funny. <laughs> Will you check his pulse? I think he's dead. <laughs> if you don't like it, get out. <laughs> I'm honest, me, I don't mess. So anyway, one day, and Tommy were dead cheeky, right? He thought he knew everything, Tommy, when, when I first met him. And he came to work with steel toe cap boots on. Now, I've got to tell you, if you're a welder, you don't wear steel toe cap boots because you get shocks. And it were on trailers, and he was welding above me. And when you do that, you can't see a thing, right? We're on piecework, so I thought, I'll have him now. So he's welding like that. I welded his steel toe caps to the job. <laughs> right? He's never forgot it. I went into... It took him an hour to chip him off, so he lost an hour's work. Anyway, so I said to Tommy, hey, and I was singing in pubs at weekend. Cause was, they all had to work overtime. I didn't because I sang in the pubs, you know what I mean? And I said to him, get a kit of drums and I'll teach you to drum. And this is how we started. He said, okay, two days later, he came in, he said, I've got a kit of drums. I said, have you got them? He said, I got them on tick. For the young people, that's the never, never HP. <laughs> and he got them on the HP. So I taught him to drum, Tommy. And we got a pianist friend of mine, and this is how Cannonball started. We started off called the Stanmore's Trio, and we used to do weddings. So we started off as a trio. I would have expected just a little bit more reaction, <laughs> like a no, Bobby, but it's true. Anyway. We sacked the pianist, and we went on our own, got rid of the drums because he was rubbish. <laughs> and we became a double act, do, working, singing, doing all the clubs uh, around Yorkshire and all that. And then we realised that the comedians got three quid more than the singers. <laughs> you know, don't you? So I said, We'll put a couple of gags in, Tom, so we're comedians. He said, all right, the first three nights we went out, we got paid off. Which means the concert set comes up and says, get out of the club, you rubbish. I can't look at you anymore, you're throwing me, you are throwing me. You will not be coming to my house for Christmas, I promise you that. So we became a comedy double act. Now I'll tell you something, there's a difference between comics and comedians, did you know that? 
Did you know that? Am I facing it right way? Right, a comic, a comedian tells funny stories. A comic is a funny man, right? Bob Munkos was a comedian. Tommy Cooper was a comic. Do you get what I mean? So that's what we became. We became the double acts and all that. So we got paid off a minute, but we slowly, slowly started to learn our craft. And uh, we went professional. And uh, I was married before, before Yvonne. We've been together 46 years, and I was married before her. So how old does that make me? <laughs> what do you say, love? <laughs> I said, a woman looked at me, I said, I wouldn't admit she went, old. I am old, you're right. And this is another thing that does my head in. Why have you got jeans on that need sewing up? <laughs> I don't get it, me. I just don't get it. They go, look how modern I am. They've got ripped jeans on, the knees are hanging out. And could you keep your head still? The light's bouncing off your head, it's going in my eyes. <laughs> anyway, where were I? Oh, yeah. Do you know something? We've been together like 46 years, but let me tell you, you know when you come home and uh, your wife meets you and your tea's on the table and they love you and give you love and, and all that when you come home? You know what that means? You're in the wrong house. <laughs> Have you thought of that? <laughs> Just kidding. Could you open it, Denny? Would you like some? Oh, thank you. See, lads. <laughs> no gin in that. Um, <laughs> you see, the reason we've been married to long because me and, me and Yvonne compromise. Get me? In a relationship, we have to compromise. And it's been, I remember I wanted a new car. You can't afford everything, but I wanted a new car. And I told her, I said, I want a new car. I said, Bob, I want a nice leather suite and three-piece leather and all that. I said, OK, so we compromised. And she got the leather suite. <laughs> but we keep it in the garage. <laughs> you see what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> So anyway, um, that was it. So we did all that, and we did all the working men's clubs, and then we started doing uh, cabaret clubs. Did you have anything, cabaret clubs in Southport? Yes. Hey? Yes. What were it called? Yes. I bet I've done that, you know. Yes. Hey? Starlight. Starlight. We've done the Starlight Room. Yeah. So we started doing these nightclubs. And they were fantastic. We did Vernon Manning's club in uh, Manchester. He used to call me and Tommy the only double act with two straight men. <laughs> and when you see Vernon Manning, everybody says, oh, I don't like... He's not half as bad as you think. Vernon Manning gives more to charity than you, and nobody ever knows. Because he doesn't tell anybody, but he does. So when you see him, he's got a dirty mouth. But he gives his heart's right. I'm telling you, he's a nice fella. So anyway, we did all these places. And then we gets to be, uh, what did we, well, we did, Op Knox. Remember Opportunity Knox? Yeah. We came last. <laughs> I'm not kidding, we got all our work cancelled. Right? And we'll call the Harper Brothers and said, we need to change our name from the Harper Brothers. Because my name's not Bobby Ball, it's actually Robert Harper. <laughs> I'll let that sink in. I think your brother's over there. <laughs> so anyway, um, no, give him a round of applause. He's took some stick off me tonight. <laughs> so I said, we need a new name, Tommy. This was the first time it happened, and it was going, we we're going on up knocks. And I said, and I've always liked a singer. Now, if you're old like me, you'll remember this fella. So. Book up, lady, now. <laughs> Freddie Cannon. You remember him? What was one of his songs? Oh, well, you didn't know him then, did you? <laughs> he 
It was way down yonder in New Orleans, did that. So I said to Tommy, it's a very strong name, so we'll call you uh, Tommy Cannon. He said, what can go with Tommy Cannon? I said, well, I'm short, call it Cannon Short. He <laughs> said, no, Ball, we'll call it, Bo I said, I'm not being called Bobby Ball. <laughs> can you imagine what all comics are going to be saying? Forget it. He said, no, Bob, we'll just do up knocks, we'll change it after. I said, all right. So we became Cannon and Ball to go on up knocks. Right, and that, that's where it stuck. And I used to come then, I said, I'll come from the audience to get your autograph, and then I'll heckle you, you'll get me on stage, and that's how the double act will start, the comedy. He said, fine. So we did Batley Variety Club, right? Tommy goes on, starts singing. I come from the back of the room, and I come down the floor and say, hey, you're very good, you're right. Suddenly I felt an arm on my shoulder, it went bouncer. He thought I reckoned, he threw me out. <laughs> True story, that. Thought I reckon I said, I kept saying, no, no, I'm part of height, I'm part of height. <laughs> <laughs> so he let me go and we did very well there. And it's very difficult with that sun on that lake. But I'm not being, you know, a diva, but... <laughs> anyway, um, I can't read my notes. Uh, so we did that. What's that? Hang, hang on. I can't. Oh, yeah. So me and Yvonne have been married 46 years, we've got three kids. Three kids, two boys and a girl. How many grandkids, Von? Nine grandkids. They're fantastic. I'd sooner have grandkids than kids. <laughs> no, they're fantastic. I'll, I'll just let me tell you this, what one of them said to me. Where's it gone that now? <laughs> Sorry about this, but it's that long since I did this. He said, Grandad, um, our, our Joel it was, he was running a little toys. He said, Grandad, did God make you? I said, yes, son, he did. He said, did he make me? I said, yes, son, he did. He said, he's doing better now, isn't he? <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> so that's my family. And we're very, my daughter, my two sons are a comedy double act. I never see them, they all go on all over the world all the time performing, but they're a good act, good comedy double act. And my daughter leads the worship, she's a dog groomer, but she leads the worship in our church. So my daughter's a Christian, but my two sons aren't now. So if you're a Christian, please pray for my children, will you? My two boys, thank you. So, we did that for many years, me and Tommy, doing the clubs, and then we started doing theatres. And the first theatre we did was with Killer Black. <laughs> at Liverpool Empire. And she was fantastic. I mean, we'd never done a theatre before. And we're in pantomime. And she looked after us like you can't believe. She was a wonderful, wonderful... <laughs> Have some control over your kids, madam. <laughs> in the old days, we called it give them a clout. Anyway. I'm only joking. <laughs> so anyway, we did all that, all the, uh, and then we started doing theatres, and we went up and up doing the, these theatres, and we, uh, first, uh, first on. And in them days, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not mourning. Well, I am mourning, really. It's changed your business now, because you used to learn your craft. You go on first, then you get second bill, third bill, did it until you got to top of bill. Today, it's all reality shows. So if you wanted to go, they can't entertain people. Do you know what I'm saying? And I see young comedians coming through. My days are finished, but you see young comedians coming through, and I know they're not going to get a break. It's sad, isn't it? Anyway, um, <laughs> so we did that, and then we went, we did, um, Bruce Forsyth had a program called Bruce Forsyth's Big Night Out. Does anybody remember that? Yeah. It was on for three hours, do you know that? And uh, they gave me and Tommy a, a, a three-minute sketch every Saturday night on this Bruce Forsyth big night out. Um, we were rehearsing it, and the head of London Weekend, a fellow called David Bell, came in, and he said, give them their own series. And it's simple as that. And they give us our own series on a Saturday night, and we used to go on, and at the end, we used to pull 20 million viewers, me and Tommy. And it were all rock on Tommy and all this, and we had a great, we've had a great, an absolute fantastic career. 
You know, it's been brilliant. So we did that, and we're on telly for about 14, 15 years, something like that. And then we do, and then variety now has gone, so we do other things. Are you with me? But that was my life. Anyway, in them days, you think about it, I'm a simple lad from Oldham. Well, just outside Shaw. Right? Simple lad who, did, who had a great career, but it went to my head. I became stupid and mental. I've been with him on 46 years. Now, when you're on television and you have this personality thing, suddenly I started to drink very heavily and end up drinking in the 80s, which none of you know, I end up drinking a bottle and a half of whiskey a day. Every day. Seven days a week. Bottle and a half of whiskey. And then I started to commit adultery against Yvonne. Not a little bit, lads. A lot of adultery. And I was away from home for 48 weeks and never went to bed alone. I didn't know that when we do things wrong, it sticks with us. You understand me? There's only one person who can clean and rub you down. That's God. I didn't know that at that time. For me, it was normality. Everybody were doing it. And that's what I did. That's what I did. And I'm living this life. Plenty of money. Always on the road. Away from home for 48 weeks a year. All the time. Then one day I go to Bradford, the Bradford Alhambra. And uh, in them days, you may not know this, but a vicar, a rabbi, and a priest, they used to have to come to the theatre to see if you wanted prayers for travelling companies. Are you with me? And suddenly I'm in my dressing room. I knock on the door. I said, come in. And a vicar walked in. A fella called Max Wigley. Right? He sat down. I said, how are you? He said, I'm fine. I said, take your collar off because you know better than me. Don't make yourself try to look important because you've got a collar on. And you're a holy man. I ain't got a clue. I'm from Romany stock, so we'd never been to church ever. Right? He took his collar off and put it in his pocket. I said, right. Talked with him. A nice fella. Really liked him. I said, I'm going out tonight, uh, if you don't mind me saying it. He said, can I come with you? I said, no, I'm pulling. He said, well, that's your business. He said, but I'd like to come and have a drink with you. That kid's doing my head and keeps staring at me. <laughs> I said, uh, <laughs> no, but listen, I'm working here and the kid's looking at me going like that. <laughs> He's trying to get off his knee now to get out, look. Anyway. So Max, he said, uh, Paul, I said, OK, so I went for a drink with him. Do you know, Lenny, man, he wasn't judgmental, like a lot of Christians are. He wasn't judgmental or nothing. He was just nice to be with. And it, the night ended, he'd gone. And when he'd gone, I started thinking about him. We had a lot of money. I didn't have what this simple vicar had. He had peace. He knew where he was going. He knew. I didn't. He knew. So I phoned him up. I said, can I come and see you, Max? Why? I said, I don't know. I want to talk with you. I don't know. I just want to say hello to you. I knew I had to see him for some reason. So he said, yeah. So I went down to his house. Yvonne said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to see the vicar. She went, what? I said, I don't know why, but I'm going. So I went. When I got in, he said, what, what's up, Bob? I said, I'll tell you what's wrong, Max. There's nothing wrong. I said, I want what you've got. I want what you've got. He said, it's called the Holy Spirit. I said, I don't even know what that is. But I want your peace. He said, let's pray. I said, I never pray in my life. Ever. He said, well, okay, I will say the words. You repeat them after me. But don't talk to me or yourself. If you're speaking to God, speak to God. I said, okay. So he started to pray. Ladies and gentlemen, I got three lines into that prayer and I cried like a child, like a baby. I wept like you can't believe. Because you know why? Suddenly, I felt a warmth come through my body and I knew it was God and I knew I was forgiven. For everything I'd done, I was forgiven. And I knew God was real, very real. I'm not a clown. I'm not an idiot. I knew it was very, very real. 
In my younger days, Lady Nair, man, I used to fight, get drunk, go with women, the lot. I knew I was forgiven for all that. I knew it. Get me? Do I still... Uh, I don't do all that, but sometimes I make mistakes, but we're human. And I go to God right away and say, forgive me, God, I shouldn't have done that. I'm serious, man. Tonight, it's a life-changing thing. It's absolutely life-changing. Mine got changed in a fella's front room. A vicar. Unbelievable. Anyway, listen to this. So I'm crying, tears of joy. I can't believe it. Suddenly, at my age, I know God's very real. This lad said to me to the night, I've got a right one feeling. She's not been a Christian long. I said, that's the Holy Spirit, Denny. And she was beaming. And I'm crying, tears of joy. And I went home to my missus, the long-suffering wife. And I walked in, she says, why are you crying? I said, I've found Jesus. She said, has he been lost? <laughs> so I threw her out. Anyway, what? Uh, no, I didn't. So I explained what had happened. I said, I don't know what it is, but he's real. He's absolutely real. She said, wow. I said, I have someone else to tell you. Lads, get this. I said, I have someone else to tell you. She said, what? I said, I've been with a lot of other women while I've been married to you. With no fear. I said that with no fear. The reason I said it to her is because I had God's forgiveness. I had to have hers. Do you know what I mean? I had to have her forgiveness. You know what she said? I knew you'd come home one day. I still said to this day, she couldn't have said that if God hadn't been in there. She couldn't have done it. I said, do you forgive me? She said, yes. Yes. I was so free, I can't tell you. It was, oh, it was brilliant. I found God. Three months later, she gave her life to God. Yeah. Absolutely, my life has been up. What was that story one about? It, when we, oh, that's it. All them people. Oh, um, oh, I know it. Yeah, because what happened, ladies and gentlemen, with this? My life changed talking. I started thinking about Jesus and God. Now, don't take me wrong when I say this. Please don't take me wrong. But if you talk to someone that's not a Christian, they think it's soft. And they think it's, you know, oh, you're a Christian, oh, do gooder. They don't realise. They don't have a clue that be a Christian is the best thing that could ever happen in your life. It's fantastic. I'm living forever. Either that or God's telling lies and God doesn't tell lies. It's true though, isn't it? It's fantastic. Are you a Christian? I've got him for eternity. No. <laughs> True. I call it the jer God's journey. What do I call it, one? Hey? God's journey. This is a story that I wrote. Listen to this. This is a story that I wrote. I like this. So, this fella thinks I'm going to go and uh, I need to find a uh, church or something. Right? And he goes on this street and it's all these shops. What, love? That's it. All the... <laughs> There's all these travel agents. And he sees them all. They're all empty except one. And the place is called God's Journey. And it's packed. And everybody's trying to get into it. Everybody's trying to get into it in the end days. It's packed. So he thinks I'm going in there. So he goes in there, he says, hug, he says... What's it like? Where is this place? And the bloke behind the counter said, it's called heaven. He said, what's it like? He said, it's unbelievable. He said, it's fantastic. He said, how much is it to go? He said, it's free. He said, what? He said, it's free. Just recognise the owner of the hotel, that's all. He said, it's brilliant. He said, well, I want to go. I really want to go. 
He said, well, here. There's your, there, have you got your passport? He said, yeah, give me your passport. I'll stamp it. Stamp the passport. He said, take that. And he gave him this book called the Bible. Believer's Instructions Before Leaving Earth. <laughs> That's what that is. Believer's Instructions Before Leaving Earth. And he read it from back to front. And he realized he were in that. And he went back to this fella and he said, I want to go to heaven. He said, give me a passport. He stamped his passport and he gave it to him. He said, when do I go? He said, God will let you know. But there's a seat book for you. You're going to heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you something now. I've had my passport stamped. Have you had yours? Think about it. Have you had yours? If you haven't, and I mean this, if you haven't had it stamped, get it stamped tonight. It won't change. Don't think it's going to like, you know, oh, I don't want to be holier than thou. You won't be. You'll be what God made you. He made you because he loves you. It's not God that sins. It's us. But he makes you because he loves you. That's how he's made us. If you're a Christian in here and you just come to church every Sunday, start praying to him. Get your passport stamped again. Because God wants us to do things for him. Does this make sense? Folks, I'll get on my soapbox. If we're proper Christians in here, we could turn this country around. And we don't. I'm serious, man. Just come to God and say, I'm here, God. What do you want of me? And I will do it. I mean it. How long have I done, love? 35. That's killed me. That's killed me. I'll tell you that. Anyway. <laughs> but do you get my point, what I'm saying? Do you like it? Now, do it now before you get too old, right? Where is she gone? <laughs> do it now before you get too old. You're never too old, love. You've gone, Von, she's in. All right. You're never too old, Lynn, you meant to start. I, I shouldn't say this. You know what kids is the proper one? Well, you've got to see it for now, because... You know you're old when you can do without sex, but not your glasses. <laughs> That's how you know. And your children start to look middle-aged. In fact, this is me, this. When you're old, you look forward to a dull evening. <laughs> I'm right, Anna. What are we doing tonight, you're watching, Cory? And that's a terrible thing, though. It's happened to me because I'm old. And you, when people ring you at nine o'clock and say, did I wake you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm killing myself. Anyway. Oh, I don't know what to talk to you about now. Should, eh? <laughs> Who said that? I'll tell you how old I am. Right, look at me. 42. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm 75. And Tom is 82. Yeah? Been together 56 years. Any more questions, anybody? Sorry? I'm not bothered about that. I said any questions. You want to? <laughs> Got one of the braces, man. What did Tommy say when I became a Christian? I said to Tommy, I went in and said, I have something to tell you, Tommy. He said, what is it? I said, I, I didn't, at first, you know, I never said I became a Christian because I didn't understand you. I was very, very new. So I just said, I found God. That's what I used to say. And then I learned later, he said, oh, I've become a Christian. So I said to him, I found God. He said, what? I said, I found God. He said, you've lost it, you. You are crackers. <laughs> and then what he saw... He saw the Holy Spirit within me, and he was drawn to it, right? And I said, I'm going to this church speaking. He said, I'll come with you. And I spoke at the end, I asked him to put the hand up, and his hand went up. Yeah. That's what happened. So he knew about it, you know. So, any more questions? You want love? 
I don't want to sing a song yet. I'm enjoying myself, love. <laughs> what? No, because we were never uh, blue, if you like. In fact, this is amazing, this. We used to do all the stag shows around Manchester, and we got more stag show booking than anybody else because we were clean. Because all the lads used to go and watch the strippers and all the blue acts, and when they watch it for a couple of hours, they think, oh, I'm a bit bored with this now. Then we come on it, we're like, oh, that's good. So we were never blue. No, we were fine with that. But I don't think I could really, because if my kids went and saw it, you know, and all that, I'd feel a bit... Uh, so enough off now. Anyway, um, <laughs> joking. Anybody else? Put your hand up. What you say? <laughs> put your hand up. No, put your hand up proper. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? I loved it. Absolutely loved it. And I don't know why they stopped it. They should never stop that. It was, I really, every one of them were lovely to get on with. All of them. It was absolutely lovely to get on with. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it very, very much. Yeah. And anyway, we just let me get back to this a minute. Oh, yeah. Shall I, can I tell them about your water retention, Yvonne? <laughs> no, don't laugh, ladies and gentlemen. Please. Uh, please, ladies and gentlemen, please do not laugh. She's got a bit of water retention, but she's gone on a diet. For a tea, she's had, she's had three chickens and a chocolate gato. <laughs> Look at Dennis, he's like, ah, oh, you can't say that. It's a joke, Denny! <laughs> I won't mention yours in a minute. Anyway, so that's my story, ladies and gentlemen, of uh, meeting Jesus. And I, I really have to tell you, if you don't know him, get to know him. Because it's absolutely fantastic. And it doesn't make you holier than thou. It doesn't make you any of that. And take your feet off the chairs, you're a pastor. <laughs> and then... Um... <laughs> <But, laughs> Being a Christian, and I'm telling you, and I'm... Listen, I know there is a God. You say, how do you know there's a God? Because I feel him. Do you get what I mean? I feel him. And I'll guarantee you something else, which you'll not believe, but it's true. If I ask God for something, one way or another, it shows up. Maybe not the way I want, but it will be the right way. Does that make sense? Get me? I'm still asking him for God, for Yvonne to leave me, but that's not work yet. But in time, sit down, Yvonne. So I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, we have a wonderful God. I'm going to sing a song in a minute that I wrote to, when I first became a Christian, I wrote to praise God. So I'm going to sing this song, um, and while I'm singing it, I want you to secretly pray to God on your own, in your mind, for whatever you want, and for whatever you want to do, talk to him in yourself, because that's what he's there, he's there. I wish I could get it over to people how much he loves us, and he does. His only son died on a cross and everything. Oh, well, you know, listen, let me tell you, he had a big boat put through his feet and through his wrist, not his hands, his wrist. Think of the pain for us. Not then, now. For us, now. It's amazing. I'm going to sing this song for, for the Lord. Thank you. Hope I remember it. <laughs> Bit more volume. I want to thank you, Lord, for being here with me, for all the things that you do. I'm in love with you. I want to. Thank you, Lord, for each new day with you, for making me brand new. I'm in love with you. I want to thank 
lucky lord You kissed, you kissed away my rain You took away all my pain You died on a cross for me I can never, never, never I can never make it up to you For all the things that you do I want to thank you, my Lord Ladies and gentlemen, just thank him now Thank him for the bad things that's happening Because he'll sort them Thank him for everything. The wonderful God, ladies and gentlemen. Just praise him. Oh, what a wonderful God. He's kissed away our rain He's took away all our pain He died on a cross for me And you, and you, and you And all the pain you went through I can never, never, never I can never make it up to you For all the things that you do I want to thank you, my Lord Thank you, my Lord Give your applause to him Give it to him, give it to him Give your applause to him Now what I want to do, ladies and gentlemen, just to finish off, I just want to say a little prayer. I want us all to bow our heads. Uh, repeat this prayer after me, but don't speak to me. Speak to God, ladies and gentlemen. Speak to God. Let's just close our eyes and speak to him. We play a bit of background music, please. Dear Father, I give you all the glory. I come to you tonight, Father, as a sinner, and I ask you to forgive me. I also come to somebody that knows you. I ask you, Father, show me what you want me to do with my life. Because I want to give it all to you. I do love you, Father. You're my God. Bless me right now, Father. Right now, bless me. You say, ask and we'll receive. I'm asking for your blessing, Lord, tonight. That when I go out of here tonight, I'm closer to you. And I know you. I'm asking all this in your wonderful name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Folks, keep your head bowed and bowed. If you've said that prayer and you felt anything at all, just lift your hand up. And then we're going to pray with you. So don't think you'll be embarrassed. Just lift your hand up if you want someone to pray with you. Just keep your heads bowed, ladies and gentlemen, and think about it. We'll pray with you later. We'll sort it out. Don't let the moment go far, people, because we don't know how long we're going to be here. So don't let the moment go. Fill now. Fill yourself right now. Don't let it go. Okay. Folks, Look at me now. Have you enjoyed tonight? Yes. I'll ask again, then you can have a bit more enthusiasm. Eh? <laughs> have you enjoyed tonight? Yes. Well, I've had an absolute wonderful night. Thank you very much for coming. That's me done. Are you crying? Come here. Come here. 
Come here, I want you. Come here. God loves you, Martin. You know that, don't you? So thank you, Lady Anne, for listening to me. And I hope I haven't bored you, but that's it. Thank you.